So I actually am a corporate girl. I started my career with Boeing, of all places, aviation and aeronautics. I was a, a operations manager and I did it for a long time and it just paid the bills. It was a good job, but it never really captured me as a passion. And I started, I actually started writing to write stories for my kids, just crazy things that happened to me. And that turned into me writing a blog because people were interested in these just everyday, normal people stories, but the outcomes kind of the, I don't know, the aha takeaway moment from funny things that happened to you. And that's how the writing really all began was literally just for my kids. I never, ever anticipated about being an author. That was never on the radar. So from there, I started blogging and capturing those stories. And that just led into writing children's books. So you have three books now? I do. I have three books. My first one was 2019. No, sorry. My first one was 2017. Second one was 18. Third one was 19. Then we took a little pandemic break and it's kind of hard to do any marketing when, when you can't go anywhere. So I've got two of them that are at illustration right now. So the next one should be out. I'm hoping July. Oh, that's great. So can we talk a little bit about them and in, in what yeah. they're about? I know they're children's books, but let's get into the nitty gritty. Yeah. I'd love to tell you about them. So the very first one is called, Why Isn't There an Elephant in My Basement? And it's about excuses and accountability. And so it's very simple. My, my books are all very simple, but yet they're very deep. So you can go as deep as you want to, actually. It's a fun story. I brought this, my first book to a, it was a music rehearsal. I was helping a high school age band. And so we would always get together before and to chat and see how everybody's doing. And so I brought this book. I said, okay, guys, I'm going to read you this book. And Miss Lori, you're not going to read us a kid's book. And they just gave me all kinds of grief. And I said, just stick with me. So I read the book to them and I said, okay, guys, so what does the basement represent? And they were just like, they gave me this just blank look. And I said, the basement's your life. It's your life. It represents your life. And they're nodding their heads. And I said, so what is the elephant? What is the elephant in the basement? What does that mean? And they just, they were, now they were actually intrigued and they said they didn't know. And I said, elephant is something that's in your life that shouldn't be there. It's in the basement, shouldn't be there. And I got, so then we talked about things that are in our lives that shouldn't be there and that whose responsibility is to get the things that are in our lives out. The very last page of the book says, so why is there an elephant in my basement? And it says, because I let her in. So that's the preface of the book. So it was, it had to have been six months later, one of these high school students came up and she sits down next to me. And she says, guess what, Miss Lori? I got rid of an elephant out of my basement this week. I thought, oh my gosh, they, they heard me. They were listening. <laughs> and so that's how it started. So the first one is about excuses and accountability. Second one is called Little White Flies. And it's about honesty taken from, it's just a little white lie. And the third one is called I Am Beautiful Too. And it's about a white peacock who doesn't think he's beautiful because he has no color. And oh. I don't know if you've ever seen a white peacock, but they are gorgeous. They're stunning. I have not, but I got to go back to the first one because I'm, I can <laughs> somewhat your first book. And the only reason why is in my coaching practice that I do, I mostly deal with attorneys, doctors, and, and pilots. But lately, as I put more video out and more content, I'm getting younger people coming to me and saying, hey, I want to be an entrepreneur. And I was speaking to this young gentleman, and I say young, he's probably guessing maybe 22, maybe 25 on the high end. And he just sees so much pressure from social media and from his friends and also from what he described as he never lost in life. And when I mean that is he always showed up and he always got a trophy. And I think that's <laughs> part of the excuses. I think that I think your book ties very well into that. And I never could relate to it because you and I both, we didn't grow up in a generation to where we won all the time. We struggled and we lost. And this young man basically told me that he thinks that he has to become an entrepreneur to be successful. And it's the only way that he's going to be happy. And my first question is, why? And he, he went on a long diatribe and we won't go there, but the gist of it is pressure from the internet, 
pressure from his family, pressure from his friends, and pressure from life in general. Because right now, being an entrepreneur on social media is the in thing. So I first asked him, are you willing to live on peanut butter and jelly sandwiches? He looked, and this was over a Zoom call. I wish I recorded it. I didn't ask and I didn't record it. And he looked at me like I was crazy. And I said, guess what? First three years that I was an entrepreneur, I was living on peanut butter and jelly sandwiches.